So we're closing in on Q2, that point when a lot of the new tech revealed early in the year during CES was start shipping out for customer orders. Lenovo's flagship gaming laptop, the Legion 9i Gen 9, is one of those products that falls in that category. And courtesy of Lenovo, I've had the opportunity to test drive it for a couple of weeks prior to its official release. This is a sample unit, however, so it's not an official retail unit. But for all intents and purposes, they're virtually identical, though some small bugs may exist. Now, the Legion 9i Gen 9 is the successor to the Gen 8 model released in 2023. And the configuration that you're looking at here is featuring the latest 14th generation Intel Core i9 14900HX CPU an RTX 49 GPU with discrete graphics, 64 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, and next-level cooling that you can't find with any other gaming laptop to date. In short, the Legion 2024 9i has a whole lot of muscle under the hood, and it chews through AAAs like a dedicated PC rig. It's without a doubt among the cream of the crop when it comes to gaming laptops for 2024. It has incredible style and flair from a physical standpoint and an intuitive RGB color tracking feature that makes me feel all fuzzy inside. But this Gen 9 iteration represents a serious, hefty investment. So for this video, we're going to get deep into the hardware, the specs, performance and benchmarks, comparisons with some top competing models, subjective critiques, and more. The end game is to help you make the best informed decision because there is a lot to be excited about this year when it comes to gaming hardware. If you're at all familiar with the 9i Gen 8, you're going to immediately realize that there's quite a bit of carryover from the Gen 8 into the Gen 9 2024 model. We're looking at a large 16-inch mini LED matte coated display with a 3200 by 2000 resolution and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio as with the Lenovo Legion Go PC handheld. The 9i display is also G-Sync compatible with a refresh rate of 165 hertz and has a max brightness of 12,000 nits. I'm sure a lot of people interested in the 9i will likely be looking at the ROG Strix SCAR 16-inch 2024 and the Asus Zephyrus G16. So for good measure, here's a snapshot of how the displays compare to one another. The 9i has the superior resolution across the board at 3.2K, with the Strix and the Zephyrus coming in at 2.5K. The Strix and the Zephyrus also feature a 240Hz refresh rate to the 9i's 165, while both the 9i and the Strix are utilizing mini-LED technology versus the Zephyrus OLED display. However, the 9i has the highest max nit brightness at 1200 nits versus 1100 for the Strix and a very underwhelming 900 nits for the Zephyrus. The Legion 9i Gen 9 overall weight comes in a little under Gen 8 at roughly 5 pounds which sits right in the middle between the Strix, which is about 5.8 pounds, and the Zephyrus, which comes in at 4.8. The 9i Gen 9 also carries over that 99.9 watt-hour battery, the max allowed for an aircraft, so that's 99.9 .9 for the 9i versus 90 watts for the Strix and the Zephyrus. Now, as for the CPU breakdown, again, the 9i Gen 9 model is upgraded from the Gen 8 to the latest Intel Core i9 14900HX, which is also mirrored on the 2024 Strix versus the less powerful Ultra 9 185H on the Zephyrus. And with max configs for these 2024 models, they can all take advantage of the GeForce RTX 4090 GPU. When it comes to cooling and thermals, liquid metal is utilized for each of these units to some extent to assist with the GPU and CPU temps. However, the 9i is the first commercially released release gaming laptop to leverage a self-contained water cooling system that was actually co-engineered with Cooler Master, making the 9i feel that much closer to a true desktop rig eliminating the need altogether for an external water pump cooler. When the system detects that internal thermals are reaching roughly 86 degrees Celsius, Lenovo's AI software, which leverages the LA2 chip for the Gen 8 and LA3 for Gen 9, auto-activates the water cooler pump before performance can be affected. You'll also notice that it has two 2280 NVMe slots, but this particular unit was having issues detecting the second SSD until I swapped the second drive into the first slot in the original containing the OS into the second. Hopefully, this is something resolved with the retail units, but if you run into this problem yourself, maybe give that a shot. Overall, if you take a step back and gauge the hardware and the specs on paper for these three 16-inch laptops, Outside of refresh rate, the Legion 9 i Gen 9, pound for pound, definitely has the edge when it comes to both gaming and productivity. Of course, you could argue that a 3.2 resolution for a 16-inch gaming laptop is overkill and that a 240Hz refresh rate display is more beneficial. But it's pretty clear Lenovo is really pushing and positioning this model for true hybrid users, content creation, 3D modeling, etc. From a more casual standpoint, I can tell you that the increased sharpness is very much appreciated for reading text and video consumption. 
and streaming movies and TV shows, especially with the Aura Sync Active, has been nothing short of amazing. It's also worth pointing out that the 9i features protocol for Wi-Fi 7 to the Strix and the Zephyrus 6e and three USB-C Thunderbolt 4.0 ports to the Strix and the Zephyrus 2 USB-C 3.2 ports. Moreover, the 9i features one rear proprietary RJ45 power input, an HDMI 2.1 port, and a USB-A port on the back as well. We also have a full-size SD card slot on the left and a shutter slider that disables the webcam on the right side, though I'd much prefer a physical cover over the cam when it's not in use. Inside of the shipping box, in addition to the laptop itself, you'll receive both a 140 and a 330 watt power adapter. The 330 watt is absolutely essential for prolonged heavy gaming, and the 140 watt adapter is for less GPU intensive work tasks. Taking a closer look, you'll see there's an RGB lit fingerprint reader that doubles as a power button, and it also shows you at a glance your thermal power status. Now, you can't miss the gap in between the keyboard and the screen itself which is almost 2.4 inches away from the screen to make room for a fairly large intake vent. This gap is also likely necessary to make room for the cooling system that utilizes some very large vents on either side as well. Now, I don't think this is a huge deal, but it ultimately means that you end up with a fairly narrow trackpad. When you're looking at it from a gaming perspective, you're probably gonna be using a separate controller or a dedicated mouse anyway. But for a laptop that's targeting content creators, I really would have liked to see more surface area for the built-in trackpad. No real issues on the keyboard itself, very responsive, and the individually addressable RGB keys aren't just cool to look at, they actually have some functional use as well. For example, hold down the function button and you can immediately see all of the hot keys that are available at your disposal. So for those that aren't as familiar, Legion Vantage is Legion's proprietary centralized hub that's very similar to the back-end software that we're seeing with a lot of PC handhelds these days, such as Legion Go's Legion Space and the RG Allies Armory Crate. It's very intuitive and easy to navigate. At a glance, you can quickly monitor things like GPU, CPU, VRAM, and storage status and you'll have quick access to system tools such as drivers and software updates from here, and there's even a Windows System Redirect button. Customize macro keys, activate head tracking for supported games, create custom spatial audio profiles, and so on. You can also utilize the AI thermal features inside of here as well, and you can keep things as simple or as advanced as you like. For example, you can lean on Lenovo's pre-configured performance mode or leverage balance mode where you can take advantage of the AI LA3 chip, which automatically tweaks internal metrics on the back end to optimize for max FPS. It's a really cool feature that we'll take a closer look at during the performance, but be mindful that the AC power source is required in order to utilize it, as well as the Aurora Color Sync feature. Now I'm told that some of these limitations are in place in an effort to conserve battery. But for example, I really enjoy remote play with the Aura Sync feature, which hardly pulls on the battery at all. So in a future update, I'd really like to see the Aura Sync feature at the very least with an option to take advantage of it without being plugged in. Anyway, you can also experiment with creating your own custom thermal presets, which also requires a power source, by the way. This allows you to make fine-tune adjustment for individual metrics as shown, and you can even create some custom fan curves here as well. So before we get into the benchmarks, I want to show you guys a few 3D Mark scores. I ran these with a combination of performance and the AI Frames Boost feature. Time Spy Extreme, which renders resolution to 4K, came in at 8500. Port Royale came in at over 10K, which is a synthetic benchmark for testing ray tracing performance. And the standard Time Spy score, which renders at 1440p, came in at over 16,000. And by the way, you're looking at Horizon Forbidden West for PC, running at a 5120 by 1400 p resolution on an LG ultra wide monitor with an aspect ratio of 32 by nine. And as you can see, I'm getting over 100 FPS with high graphics. So for the performance section, I'm gonna break things down by resolution. We'll kick things off with 1440p, and then we'll hit 600p, followed by 3.2k, and finally 4k. I also kept a high graphics preset across the board because again, we're working with the 4090 here. So at a 1440p resolution, graphics high, DLLS upscale to performance, the Gen 9 pulled in an average FPS of 251, utilizing the AI FPS boost feature versus a 242 FPS average utilizing performance mode. Adding ray tracing to the mix yielded an average of 148 FPS with AI and 139 with performance mode. I also kept these parameters in place and activated the Lenovo Vantage Overclock and saw some solid gains with ray tracing still active. 152 FPS average utilized in AI and 104 with performance mode. Switching over to 600p, the breakdown was as follows, with only a very slight drop in performance across the board, utilizing the very same parameters with the exception of in-game resolution. 
Leveraging the 9i's native 3.2 resolution, AI brought in an average FPS of 186 to the performance modes 182. One thing I thought was particularly impressive here is that the AI with ray tracing outperformed performance mode with ray tracing as well, but with overclocking the CPU and the GPU. When we move into 4K, performance still remains quite strong at these set parameters, dropping from 186 FPS at 3.2K with AI enabled to 159 FPS. And performance mode went down from 182 average at 3.2K to 152 for 4K. However, when adding ray tracing back into the mix, we see FPS drop to about the mid 80s and overclocking didn't add any significant gains. Now, without the help of any upscaling techniques and with ray tracing disabled, the average across the in-game resolutions was as follows. At 3.2K resolution, performance mode finally just barely nudged out AI, 89 FPS average versus 88, but at 4K, AI promptly moved back ahead. Switching over to Horizon Zero Dawn, the performance breakdown was as follows. Feel free to freeze the screen here if need be, but the trend continues as with Cyberpunk, with performance mode slightly lagging behind AI. So yeah, I've been very impressed so far with how Lenovo's FPS boost feature has been performing. Now, when it comes to battery life, generally speaking, it's honestly not great, even with the 99 watt hour battery. When going all out with AAA, I've been getting about an hour, hour and a half tops, and between two to three hours when playing it safe. As I'm sure most of you guys know already, generally speaking, the newer processors for Intel are generally strong performers, at least for laptops, but they aren't exactly known for their efficiency. But on the positive side, I think Lenovo has done a really good job with shrinking down their AC power adapters to make them much easier to travel with. Aside from the run-of-the-mill, game-to-game, in-game adjustments that comes with the PC territory, the Lenovo Vantage Suite makes this gaming laptop feel a lot more consoleized than I ever could have imagined. Occasionally, I like the idea of set it and forget it. Sometimes I've had a long day and I just want to dive into a game without a whole lot of fuss. And that's exactly what this feature allows you to do. But it's a bummer that the trackpad is on the smaller side and that the internal speakers are just okay at best. It'd also be real nice to be able to play heavy graphical games without compromise for more than an hour and a half without hitting up an outlet but maybe that's just too much to ask right now from Intel. But in spite of any of that, the Legion 9 i Gen 9 screams premium at almost every turn. The internals, the cooling, the materials used, the polished software. The problem though, when it comes to weighing a purchase decision for this particular unit and of this magnitude, the dilemma presents itself in the fact that the Legion 9 i Gen 8 already exists. Though again, it is using the 13th gen Intel Core processor to the Gen 9's 14 and the LA2 AI chipset to the Gen 9's LA3. But you really have to ask yourself, does this bump in processing power warrant picking it up over the Gen 8 model? Truth be told, if you can hold out for a bit, we might start to see the price go down for the Gen 9 over the next few months. Personally, if you have the 9i Gen 8, I'd hold on to that laptop. And if not, and you're able to land the Gen 8 from a reputable source, which does seem to be becoming increasingly more difficult, maybe give that a shot first. Again, the Asus Strix Scar and the Zephyrus appear to be some very solid alternatives as well, but I really do like the 3.2K resolution on the Legion, which is getting really close to 4K versus the 2.5K that those Asus gaming focused 16 inch laptops are offering. And at 1200 nits max brightness, because it means you can really take advantage of the RTX 4090 on the go from a resolution standpoint, without the need of a high-res monitor. But I'm not gonna lie, mini LED is very nice, but I would like to see an OLED option at some point from Lenovo's flagship gaming laptop. I don't think that's too much to ask, given what Lenovo is asking at this point for this unit. That being said, I'm not so sure I'd be willing to sacrifice the 1200 nits to make that happen. Before I wrap, I wanna know if you currently own a gaming laptop, and if so, what's the CPU and GPU config? As PC handhelds continue to become more accessible, there's always that debate on whether it makes sense to just go and get a gaming laptop because there's definitely significant pros and cons of each. So let me know which side of the fence do you stand from that perspective. As always, thanks for watching and supporting the channel and I will see you guys in the next one.